This morning, I had the pleasure of having my, a friend, a new friend of mine, Mr. Jody Cagle, evangelist. You go by evangelist or pastor? Evangelist Jody Cagle here this morning. He travels all over the place, and he speaks. And my buddy, him and Adam, you guys have been friends for quite some time. Me and Adam have been friends for a while. We're both from the Chattanooga area, the Brainerd area, and we connected at an event that I did, and we have been friends and business partners and all sorts of stuff, but most of all, he's my brother, so he said, I got this guy that wants to talk to you about speaking, and he said his name is Jody Cagle, and I didn't know Jody, but ironically, Quentin had already told me about Jody Cagle, and we ate, we sat down and we ate lunch, and I was trying to live healthy. We went to a barbecue place. I said, I'm just going to get a salad, and Jody said, you're such a girl. No, he didn't say that. He, <laughs> he said, well, I'm going to have, what did you have? He was trying to tempt me with his barbecue. That's what the devil does. But, but he is here this morning, and he, I'm sure God's going to use him to bring an amazing word this morning. But most of all, I appreciate you giving me a week off. I told him, uh, Quint was like, Jody's not here yet. If he don't come, I was like, well, then you're speaking. And Quint's like, well, if I don't speak, I was like, Ricky's speaking. I'm not stepping on that stage, so you better hope the Holy Spirit moves or something this morning because I'm not speaking. But if you all would, please give my friend, Mr. Evangelist Jody Cagle, a hand clap as he makes his way up here. Red light means on. Praise the Lord. How is everybody tonight, today? <laughs> Praise God. Everybody good? good? Everybody good? Praise God. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. That almost tipped over. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, let, me, let me just do this. How about this? Can I set it on this drum? Is that all right? Praise God. How's everybody today? Amen? Amen. Everybody good? Praise God. Uh, just let me introduce myself if, you, if I can. Uh, I'm Jody Cagle. It's so good to see Quentin and uh, his lovely wife and his family. Uh, Brittany, right? See, I remember it. Tater tot. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. But uh, they were in my youth group years ago, I believe, right? Or leaders or youth group. Were y'all married then? I don't remember. Y'all were married then. Okay. Anyway, it's been so long uh, ago. Me and my wife have been married 23 years and we started youth ministry about 22 years ago. And uh, so she is not here, uh, my apologies, but I will say this, she chose to be with her dad preaching rather than her husband preaching. <laughs> Amen. Uh, her father's preaching in Marietta. Uh, my wife is from Oklahoma, so her mom and dad came here for Thanksgiving. She didn't get to see them a lot. And so she is with him and Marietta. Uh, so we have been married for 23 years. We have a son that is 19, plays college football at Berry College. And then we have a girl that is 17 years old who is a senior in high school. And then we thought we'd become modern Abraham and Sarah's. So we have a seven-year-old. <laughs> Amen. They said that children to keep you young, I'll let you know. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, no, it's such a blessing. Uh, it's been so, so rewarding uh, we have youth pastored, we pastored in Oklahoma, pastored in Cartersville, Georgia, youth pastored in Rome, Georgia as well, and then uh, we've been on the uh, field again traveling, evangelizing for seven years. God has been so, so good to us. This has been our busiest year we've had in a long time, amen, and so to God be the glory of the great things he has done, amen. And so I just want to say thank you for allowing us to come today. Thank you to your pastor and his lovely wife and family. I really appreciate it. We don't count this uh, worthy, but we are appreciative that Jesus makes us worthy. Amen. Um, and so it is a privilege and an honor to speak for him. It's a privilege and honor to speak here for you today as well. So uh, I'm here ready for the word today. Amen. Amen. So pastor said y'all got out about... 2.30. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Amen. So uh, we got to get started here. I, I've got an illustrated sermon that uh, the Lord has given me, and uh, I'm going to give to you this morning. And um, I just want to read this scripture. If you have, uh, do you have a way to put up scripture? Um, if you do, can you throw up Hebrews 10.23? I'm just going to read one scripture, 
Um, well, I only want one scripture up on the screen, if that's okay. I'm going to read a lot of scriptures, but only one that I really want you to focus on, Hebrews 10, 23. And while they're putting that up there, let me go ahead and read it to you. Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast to our confession. And he says that it waver not, for he is faithful that promised. How many can say amen to that? And so I want to talk about this scripture. I want to break it down this morning. And in fact, I want to read out of the ESV. If you have, a, if you have the American Standard Version or the ESV Version, that's great, or Amplified Version, either one of those. Uh, but the, the American Standard Version reads it like this. Let us hold fast the confession. Everybody say, hold fast. Hold fast. The confession. Everybody say, Confession. And then the American Standard said, of our hope rather than faith. And then it says that it waver not, for he is faithful that promise. And so I want to point out those three things, hold fast and confession, and then also the word hope. Now, he's not trying to take away, in this version, he's not trying to take away the word faith, but because we have faith, it gives us hope. Everybody say amen. Because we have faith, faith in what? Faith in God, faith in Jesus as our Savior, faith in his word, faith in salvation, faith in uh, the Holy Spirit, faith in everything that God created and has done within us. We have faith in that, and because we have faith in that, it gives us hope. Everybody with me? Can you say amen? So they're working on that, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start reading scriptures. So like I said, we're going to point out three things. Everybody say three things. Number one, hold fast. Everybody say hold fast. And then the number two thing is confession. And then the number three thing is what? Hope. Everybody say hope. So let me read this to you really quickly before we get to scriptures. Let me, let me just point out, what is the definition of hold fast? Let me give this to you really quick before we re read scripture. Hold fast means this. Here's what the word hold fast. I'm going to point out these three things. Use the illustration. Bring it all together. So hang with me. Is that all right? Hold fast means this. Firm grip. Everybody say firm grip. That's the number one definition. Number two definition of hold fast is to bear down in the midst of a storm. To bear down in the midst of the storm. And then the all the other definition I like about uh, hold fast is you don't change your mind about it. You don't change your mind about it. In other words, you're not wavering. You're not good here one day, but yet doubting the next day. You have faith continually. You have hold fast continually every single day, no matter how your feelings are going or how your mind is going. Remember, your mind didn't get saved. Your feelings didn't get saved. Your spirit man got saved. That's why he said we've got to listen to our spirit, be led by our spirit, and not by our flesh. So every single day is a good day. You know why? Because God woke you up this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Not everything might be going your way, but it's still a good day. Why? Because Jesus is on the throne. God's on the throne. Jesus at the right hand of the Father, praying for you and for me. We're still forgiven. Salvation still free. The Holy Spirit's still inside of me, and we have the word of God for us and not against us. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Hebrews tells us, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So hold fast means what? And we'll go through it one more time. Firm grip, it means to bear down in the midst of the storm, and it also means that you don't change your mind about it. Everybody say, don't change your mind. We cannot change our mind. If we change our mind, we're going to get in trouble. Amen. And so watch what he says here. Let me read a couple more verses about hold fast, and they're just going to leave that up there. Hold fast in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13 says this, Hold fast to the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. So this is Timothy talking and he's telling you to hold fast to the sound words. What's the sound words? It's the Bible. It, hold fast to the Bible. Hold fast to the Bible. What does hold fast mean? Firm grip on the Bible. Everybody with me? He means to bear down in the midst of the storm. To what? 
in the Bible. The Bible is the two-edged sword. The Bible is the only thing that defeats the enemy. It is the, it is the greatest book ever written in all time. Let me tell you one thing about the Bible that you may, may know or you may not know. Listen to this. It's the only book that you can read, believe, and speak, and it comes to pass. <laughs> The Bible is the greatest book that you could ever have in your life. It's the greatest book ever that you could read. And I challenge you to use the word of God. Why? All three times that Jesus was tempted, what did he say? It is written. So if he had to speak the word to defeat the enemy, guess what we have to do? We have to speak the word to defeat the enemy out of our mouths as well. Listen to what he said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 25 and 26. Hold fast what you have till I come. He's telling us hold fast to what? What you have till I come. Watch what he says. And he who overcomes and keeps my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. So what is he saying? Hold fast to what you have till I come. So in other words, hold fast. Bear down in the midst of the storm. Firm grip. To what? What you have till I come. What do you have? Well, the number one thing you have this morning, if you got Jesus lived on the inside of you, is salvation. Amen. Amen. If you're healed this morning, guess what? You got healing to hold fast to. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Hold fast to that. You got the word of God that's right there that you can read and believe and speak it. Hold fast to that. You got peace in your mind and in your heart. Guess what? Hold fast to that. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. You got joy this morning because you're saved. Hallelujah. Guess what you got to do? Hold fast to that. Amen. Hold on to that. Firm grip to that. Bear down in the midst of storm to that. Everybody understand what hold fast means now? Now we're going to go to the second definition or the second word. The second word is confession. The second word is confession or profession. The other version says hold fast to your profession. But the word confession actually breaks it down a little bit better, I think. In Hebrews 10, 23, American Standard Version, ESV Version, Amplified Version, hold fast to the confession. Confession and profession mean the same thing. But it's a simple definition for what confession means. Here it is, if you're taking notes. Confession means to say the same thing as the word of God says about you. Confession means to say the same thing as the word of God says about you. You know, I think about this, my seven-year-old. My seven-year-old just only knows what to do by what we do as parents, but then by what her teacher does with her in second grade. So what does my seven-year-old do? She comes home and she says, I need y'all to sit down, talking to me, talking to my wife, talking to my 17-year-old and talking to my 19-year-old. My seven-year-old ruling the house, all right? She said, I need y'all to sit down. She said, what we're going to do today is I'm going to ask the questions and you're going to answer it. <laughs> How is she, why is she doing this? Because she is repeating what she saw, but she's repeating what she heard. So see, even as a child, we repeat what we see and we repeat what we heard. So the same way with the word of God, we got to repeat what he says according to the word and we got to keep doing what the word says for us to do. And so confession means to say the same thing as the word of God says about us. Amen. Hallelujah. So watch what he says in the scripture. I love this. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 and 13, talking about confession. Here it is. Fight the good fight of faith. Why is it a good fight of faith? Because you win. I read the end of the book. Yeah, I might have trials. Yeah, I might have things that come against me, storms and everything. But guess what? I'm an overcomer. How? By the blood of the Lamb and word of my testimony. I will not be defeated. I will not be denied. I will not be distracted. Why? Because Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. Amen. He's for me and not against me. Yeah, the storm may seem great, but it's not greater than him. Why? Because he spoke this peace to the sea and calmed the storm. Just like that. Amen. The peace speaker lives on the inside of you if you're saved this morning. So he said, fight the good fight of faith. Listen to this. Take hold of the eternal life which you were called when you made, listen, when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. You made your good confession. 
What's confession mean? Say the same thing as the word of God. So what are you confessing in the, in the presence of many witnesses? You're saying, I'm saved. Jesus loves me. I'm God's child. And God's my heavenly father. You're professing that you are Christ-like. Or you are a Christian. Or you're living proof that Jesus saves. Jesus forgives. And Jesus washes away all of your past. And behold, made all things brand new. How many are living proof in here that I was once headed for hell and I was in sin, but now I'm saved and on my way to heaven, I got a brand new life. Anybody in here today, can you just say amen? amen. Hallelujah. I thank God this song, I won't sing, I won't sing, I won't sing, because you will run out of here if I sing. But this song has been dwelling up on the inside of me this morning, and pastor can sing it, and I know he can sing, amen. But, uh, but this song been dwelling up on me this morning. What can wash away my sins nothing 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 but the blood of Jesus what can make me new again nothing 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 but the blood of Jesus can I tell you the blood is the most powerful thing Jesus' blood is the most powerful thing amen why because it washes away all of our sins forgives us of all of our shortcomings our iniquities our transgressions so a man who was perfect took on the sin of the world so that you and I don't have to live in bondage anymore. And so therefore we could come to him boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Hallelujah. And we ask him to come into my heart and forgive us of all of our sin. And he does it. You know why he does it? Because he loves you. I said he loves you. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody say amen. And so he's talking about confession here. Listen to this, Hebrews 3, 1. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts, listen to this, fix your thoughts on Jesus whom we acknowledge or confess or profess as our apostle and high priest. Can I tell you, the mind is a great thing. Because what you think about the most will affect you the most. But what you think about the most would eventually drop to your heart. And the Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Amen. So be careful. The Bible says also about the mind. I'm not preaching on the mind. But the Bible also said to take every thought captive. Take every thought captive unto what? Unto the obedience of Christ. Why, why, why? What are you doing? You're lining up with your thoughts with the word of God. If your thought is not in line with the word, then cast that thought out. But watch this. If you just cast that thought out, your mind's empty. Now I got to put the right thought in. So therefore my mind can be full of the word. The Bible also says that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Anybody with me? Can you say amen? We're talking about confession. We're talking about profession. Listen to this. Hebrews 10, 32. Whoever acknowledges me. Now this verse gets me. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. So picture this. Maybe you got this revelation. I just kind of really got it this year, uh, just preaching this sermon. And he said, whoever acknowledges me, listen to this, before others. So watch this. If you're at Walmart, if you're at a grocery store, if you're on your job, if you're in the marketplace, it, this is a cool place, man. I just want to tell you, I didn't know you was downtown. And so th this, this is a cool place, being downtown. Down, uh, at, right on Main Street. Amen. And so, anyway, I, I just throw that in there. I just thought it was really cool when I drove up. I never preached at a church that's on Main Street, like, you know, in, like, like right here. I mean, this is amazing. So, anyway, I just had to throw that out there. But watch it. He said, whoever acknowledged me before others. So, if you go out of here and go to this little coffee shop, of course, you got the best coffee here, but I'm just saying, if you went to this coffee shop right down the store, right on the street here that I passed when I walked up here, and you went in there and you're telling them Jesus loves you. Just want to tell you that you have a blessed day today because 
I want to tell you that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. So you're witnessing to them. Watch this, watch this. Get this picture. So Father God's here. Jesus is at his right hand. Well, that's your left hand, but it's my right hand. So Jesus be here for you, but Jesus is here for me. So watch this. So as you tell people about Jesus, you tell them, Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. There's a better way of living. There's a better way of life than what you're living. Drugs is not the answer. That all the things that you're searching for are not the answer. It'll never fill the void in your life. There's only one that can fill the void in the life, in your life, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. And so you start telling them about Jesus. Watch, watch, watch. Watch what happens. So Jesus sees you witnessing, and Jesus is watching you. Then all of a sudden, Jesus turns to the Heavenly Father. He said, Father God, Father God, watch, watch, watch. Jody is down there witnessing. Jody's telling them that I love them and you love them and that you sent me to die on the cross. He's down there witnessing. Father God, watch, watch, watch. So when you think nobody sees you, Telling somebody else about Jesus. Oh yeah, Matthew 10, 32 says it. That Father God in Jesus, Jesus is acknowledging you to his Father when you make the good confession. When you're telling somebody that Jesus loves them. When you're telling them that there's a better way of life. Anybody with me, can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we got hold fast in. We got confession in. Now we got to go to hope because he said hold fast the confession of our hope. And there again, that word in King James is faith. And like I said, we're not trying to take away the word faith. What he's trying to do here, he knows you already believe in God. He knows you already believe in Jesus and you believe in the word. But because you have faith, it gives you hope. Now here's what I like. And we're going to do an illustration and bring all this to pass. So hang with me just a second. So watch this, hope. What does hope mean? Hope means, let me read it right, confident, joyous expectation. Hope means confident, joyous expectation. Say this with me, say confident, joyous expectation. So one more time, confident, joyous expectation. So watch this, he said, let us hold fast the confession of our confident, joyous expectation without wavering for he is faithful who promised. Now listen to this verse. Now this verse illuminated me when I realized what the definition of hope meant. And so watch this, Jeremiah 29, 11, watch what he says. For I know the plans I have for you, listen, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Listen, plans to give you hope and a future. So watch this. God has a plan to give you confident, joyous expectation. He has a plan to give you confident, joyous expectation. So I want to ask you this. Watch this. What are you expecting from the Lord? Because if you have no expectation, then don't complain when you don't receive anything. Because watch this. No expectation means no faith and then if you don't have any faith you don't have any expectation I don't know about you but I married my wife I expect her to be at home tonight when I go to bed (laughs) anybody with me she's not working night shift no more praise the Lord hallelujah don't have to sleep by myself no more amen now I do when I go on the road but praise the Lord amen but I don't tonight I'm at home tonight amen so there's an expectation right Come on, somebody. You expect if you work all week that your boss or your company, somebody, gonna give you some money to pay your bills. There's an expectation. You know why? Because you got faith in what you're doing is gonna produce the expectation that you have of what you need. Woo, I don't know if I can say that again. That was just revelation knowledge. You have faith in what you're doing. Help me, somebody. You have faith in what you're doing because you are expecting to get what you need. Did I say something like that? I mean, I just came out of the spirit. I'm just telling you, amen. I've never said that before in my life, amen. I hope you got it recorded because I'd like to write that quote down for myself. That's my quote, by the way, amen. It ain't written on here, amen. That's my quote, so don't steal it. But, uh, But watch, your expectation is because you have faith. But if you don't have any faith, you don't have any expectation. Anybody with me, can you say amen? So he says here, he said he has a plan to give you hope, confident, joyous expectation. You know why? Because the Lord loves you. 
Watch this. He withholds no, no good thing. Listen, he withholds no good thing to them that walk uprightly before the Lord. <laughs> wow. He withholds no good thing. You know why? He wants you to have it all. He wants to give it all to you. You know why he wants to give it to you? Because you're an example of his love. You're an example of his grace. You're an example of his mercy. You're an example of what can happen when he washes your sins away, when he heals your body, when he changes you from the inside out and he transforms your mind with the word of God and he gives you a mouth to speak the word instead of speaking cursing. Come on, somebody, amen. You're an example of the Lord and of his goodness. And so that's why he wants you because you are a picture of who he is. As a Christian. So that's why he don't withhold anything from them that walk uprightly. He wants to have you to have it all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, Isaiah 40, 31. Listen to this. But those who hope in the Lord. Where's your confident, joyous expectation? Watch this. In the Lord. Those who have confident, joyous expectation in the Lord. Guess what? He'll renew your strength. You'll soar on wings like eagles. You'll run and not grow weary. And you'll walk and you shall not faint. Hallelujah. Listen to one more scripture and then I'll uh, trans transfer to the illustration. Listen to what he said. He said, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, everybody say word. word. I put my hope. So the previous scripture told us to put our hope, confident, joyous expectation in the Lord. Now this one in Psalms 130 and 5 says in his word. I put my confident, joyous expectation. Can I tell you the greatest thing that you could ever do is know the word, believe the word, and speak the word. Because the word will surely come to pass. I said it when I started. It's the only book that will actually produce what it is made to produce if you believe it and if you speak it out of your mouth. you got to read it first and then you believe it and speak it out of your mouth, and it will come to pass. Amen. amen. Anybody with me? Can you say amen? amen. So watch this. I got an illustration somewhere. Where did I put it? Praise the Lord. So watch this. I'm going to bring all this. Hold fast, confession, and hope. So years ago, year, uh, years ago, I was researching this scripture and uh, earlier in the year, and I, I've never seen this scripture like this before. And the Lord just gave me revelations. I was right there in my living room just reading it. And so I was scrolling down, reading different versions of this verse, just trying to figure everything out. So I kept scrolling down, kept scrolling down. There was a video on there. And it said, hold fast video. And so I was like, what in the world is this? So I clicked on it. And it was this guy that was a woodwork, a woodworker. And uh, he come on there and he said, welcome to blankety blank, whatever his name was, uh, you know, show. And uh, it's my woodworking show. I don't remember his name. And he was like, here we have today. And he held up this. He said, this is a hold fast. I was like, a hold fast? I didn't even know there was a tool called a hold fast. So I was like, I got to watch this. And so I kept watching this. And he had a table. About this length of a table is a little bit uh, wider, but he had a table like this, and there was holes all in it. And he said, maybe you've never seen this. He said, but this was an old-timey woodworking table. He said it had holes in it, and when they drilled those holes, it was jagged in there. He said, and they made these, and they would put these in there just like this right here. And so when they would put this in the hole, they'd take the hammer, and they would hit it, and it would go down in the hole, and then this would be the piece of wood. And he said, so it holds the piece of wood just like this. And so the, the whole fast was on top of the piece of wood. And when it was there on top of the table, he began to carve it. He began to sand it. He began to drill in it. And that wood never moved. And the thing that got me, he took that whole fast. It, it, well, no, he took the piece of wood, but the whole fast was already in there. And he took that piece of wood and he went like this right here. And he was trying to shake and get that piece of wood out from underneath that whole fast. And it would not move. And so it just began to illuminate my eyes. 
the revelation started flowing because if we will truly hold fast to the word of God without wavering, hold fast to our confession of our hope without wavering, guess what? When the devil comes to try to pull us away from church, come on somebody, when he tries to pull us away from our Bible time, reading time, praying time, worshiping time, witnessing time, Come on, somebody. When he tries to pull us away from our family, when he tries to pull us away from our relationships that are right relationships, God-given relationships, when he tries to pull us away, guess what? We have a firm foundation, because why? We're holding fast to the word of God. Amen. So watch this. I knew you wouldn't get it, so I brought another illustration that I bring all this to pass. Amen. So I need six people to jump up here real quick. Six people. Come on. Come on, Quentin. I need you for sure. Amen. Six people. Come on. Five more. Four more. Uh, three more. Come on up here. I need you all up here. I need you to hold these two. Come on. Come on up here. Praise the Lord. Stand right here, sister. Don't turn that around. Don't turn that around. Come on, I need a couple more. How you doing, sister? Good to see you. She used to come to my church yeah. when I was pastoring. Praise the Lord. Good to see you again. I need one more. Come on now. Don't make me come in out there and get you. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. I don't care who it is. Come on up, buddy. If I said I'm going to give you $100, I bet every one of them you've been up here. <laughs> but guess what? I don't have no cash on me. My kids got it all. Praise the Lord. Amen. So watch this. So here it is. We're holding fast, Right? So what are we doing? Come here. Don't be shy. Amen. <laughs> so what are we doing? Hold on. Don't stand in front of her. She can't see her. Amen. So what are we doing? We're holding fast to what? <laughs> to the word of God. Everybody with me? We're holding fast to the word. Okay. And so every day we're like, Father, we thank you that this is the day that you have made just for me. I think that everything's working in my favor. Favor surrounds me like a shield. I thank you that I walk by the Spirit. I'm led by the Spirit. Thank you that the favor of the Lord's around me. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Whatever I put my hands to is blessed. I just think that it's going to be a great day. I thank you that my relationship's going to be great. I thank you my job's going to be great. Thank you, Lord, that I'm going to get a raise. Amen. <laughs> Most people say amen to that, but watch this. So turn that around and turn this around. Verse 2. So what are we doing? Hold it up high. Hold it up high. So what are we doing? You're, you're, you're holding fast to what? Actually, y'all are backwards, but that's all right. You get the drift. No, actually, slide back over so we don't get it confused. All right, so holding fast to what? Of what? What are you professing? What are you confessing? Remember, saying the same thing. What's this mean? Firm grip. What's this mean? To bear down in the midst of the storm. Everybody with me? Bear down in the midst of the storm to what? To what? To your profession or confession of what? What are you speaking? Excuse me. What are you speaking? You're speaking the word of God. So let me give you this to you. Don't let it box away. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what are you speaking? You're speaking the word of God. The word of God is the most powerful thing that you have available to you. It defeated the enemy for Jesus. It will defeat the enemy for you. Listen, we're not fighting a warfare of flesh and blood. It is spiritual. The only way to defeat it spiritual is to do spiritual food. Anybody with me? Can you say amen? It's by the Spirit. The Word of God was given by the Spirit. The only thing that defeats the enemy, listen, do you know the person that's most afraid of you speaking the Word of God is the devil? You know why? Because the Word of God, he cannot speak. Neither can the demon speak it. So the person that is most afraid of you getting the word on the inside of you and to come out of your mouth is the devil. So he'll do everything he can to get the word out of your mouth, to call, talk defeat, talk negative, complain about everything. Why? Because you're not lined up with the word of God. But if you'll line up with the word of God, I'm telling you right now, the word of God will work for you. If you'll believe it, if you'll receive it, if you'll read it and you'll speak it, it will come to pass. It's the only book that will actually come to pass. Praise the Lord. Y'all with me? So watch this. Come on. Hang on. So we're holding fast. We're doing good, right? And then what happens? Turn around, hold it up high. What happens? Storm. What kind of storm? Well, I don't know. Your car breaks down. I don't know. Your air conditioner quits. Well, that's all right right now, but your heater quits. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
And so something happens, right? Everybody with me? Anybody ever had a storm? <laughs> All right? I'm talking about you're sailing in the ocean storm. I'm talking about a storm in your life. Anybody with me? Something goes wrong. Something's not working out. Your children won't listen. Your dog's biting you. You know, something, right? Something's not working. And so a storm. So what does a storm meant to do? It's sent by the devil to get your focus off of the word of God, to get you to stop holding fast or professing or confessing the word of God. <laughs> he didn't know I was going to do that. He'll never let me do it again, but that's all right. Why? This is what the devil wants to do. Watch. I'm telling you right now, this is how the Lord showed it to me. It might be simple to you, but that's all right. I'm going to take simple if I can understand it. Amen. So watch. The storm is meant to get the whole fast out of your mouth. It's meant to get you to quit confessing, professing your confident, joyous expectation without wavering for he is promised sorry he, for he who promised is faithful if the if the devil can get you to not speak the word and not hold fast the word then the storm will take you out anybody with me can you say amen yes. what did they do just a couple of years ago when we had a hurricane uh, watch here in georgia i don't know about you but they told us they said they said, you need to take your umbrellas down. You need to put your chairs in your back uh, yard down or your back deck down. And then they even canceled school for my kids because they're supposed to be 60 to 80 mile an hour winds. The buses can't drive that. So my kids were so happy they canceled school. And then the, that day uh, showed up. And I don't know if you remember, but I remember because I was at home. And that no rain and no wind. <laughs> right? But guess what you did? You prepared before the storm ever came. So preparation is more important than doing it in the storm. Because whatever's already in you will come out of you when you get in the midst of the storm. You can't say, oh, Lord, what's going to happen now? I can't believe this. This has never happened to me. I cannot, I, 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 I've, I've never dealt with this before. I, I just don't know what to do. Listen, it's too late, honey. You should have already put the word in. You should have already been confessing the word. You should have already held fast to the word of God before the storm ever showed up. Because listen, in the midst of that storm, guess what you're going to do? You're going to do what Psalm 23 said. You're going to walk right on through the valley. You're going to lift your hands and praise the Lord. You're not going to fear death. You're not going to feel any trial. Why? Because the Lord thy God is with you everywhere you go. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so the storm shouldn't take you out. Now it might rub you the wrong way, but guess who sent the storm? The devil trying to steal the whole fast, trying to steal the word. The Bible even says the devil comes immediately. Actually says the thief, but it is the devil. The thief comes immediately to what? Steal the word from you. He's trying to take the word out of your heart, off of your mind, and out of your mouth. Now, right here is the point where you come into church. And pastor said, good morning, how you doing? And they look at you, they look at pastor and you go, uh, well, praise the Lord, you in a storm. And then you look at somebody else, they say, pastor says, good morning. And they look back at pastor, good morning, hallelujah. They not in a storm. <laughs> I mean, you know, right when they come in, I've done been pastor before, I know, I know. Amen, I can tell when you're in a storm, I tell when you can't. You know what they tell us in Bible college? They said, fake it till you make it, praise the Lord, amen. Put a smile on your face anyway. I don't care if you just lost all your money, hallelujah. Jesus gonna repay you, amen. Right? Put a smile on your face, amen. So watch this, the storm is done. And guess what you do? You're like, Phew. right? You're like, praise God. <laughs> I just got through that, everything's good, right? Everybody talking to me, talk to me now. And then guess what happens, come on. Guess what happens, turn around. Now a trial hits. Trial, What's a, what could be a trial? Well, it could be anything. It could be, like I said, something break in your house, something break on your car, something at your job, something with your children could go wrong, a trial, anything that will get your focus off of holding fast 
to the word of God. Everybody with me on that? So watch this. You've got to bear down in the midst of the storm. You've got to keep confessing in the midst of the storm. You've got to hold fast to the word of God in the midst of the storm. That's what hold fast means, to bear down firm grip in the midst of the storm. Amen. That boat does not usually run from a storm. What do they do? They usually say, batten down the hatches. Throw the anchor out. We're going to ride this thing out. Anybody with me? Can you say amen? amen? So watch. So you got done with the trial, and here we are. We're going we're to wrap this thing up right here. Turn around. Why? I'm going to ask this question. Why do you pray? Why do you read the word? Why did you get saved? Why do you come to church? Why do you witness? Maybe some of you might fast. Why do you fast? Why do you worship? Why do you, why do you praise God? Why do you do all of this? Why do you do all this? Because I know if I will do this, and I will do this, even though these may come, my confident, joyous expectation is that my God hears and answers my prayers. My confident, joyous expectation is in what? The word. He said that that the devil meant for evil. What did he say? He will turn around for your good. So right here in the storm and the trial, you can't get your eyes on what's wrong. You got to keep your eyes on what's right. You got to keep your eyes on what Jesus got, got him through the cross. Jesus got through with the, the, re, uh, the, the cross and the resurrection. How did he get through it? He got through it because he held on to the word that was on the inside of him. Anybody say amen. And so you got to keep your confident, joyous expectation in the Lord and in the word. Anybody see this this morning? Amen. amen. I said anybody see this this morning? You got to hold fast to the word of God. Amen. amen. Why? Because the only thing that will last and the only thing that will come to pass is the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody say amen. amen. Can you give my hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go, go ahead. <laughs> Praise God. So I come here today trying to give you exactly what the Lord has given to me. To hold fast to your what? Confession slash profession of what? Of hope. Faith. Hope. Confident, joyous expectation without wavering. Listen, the Bible says those that waver are tossed to and fro. You can't love God today and don't know the next day. You can't be committed to God one day and non-committed the next day. You can't be committed to church one month and not the next month. Listen, I'm just telling you, a person that's tossed in to and fro, you're wavering. Listen, the greatest thing you can do is say, I'm committed and commit just like I committed to my wife 23 years ago I committed I love you till Jesus comes back or me or you go to heaven I'm committed how many can say I'm committed to the Lord amen can I tell you hold fast to your confession or profession of your hope confident joyous expectation can you stand on the feet this morning Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to ask you this question. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Please, nobody moving to look around just for a moment. I just want to ask you this question. I don't ever take it for granted that everybody is saved when they come to church. I don't ever take that for granted. Because not everybody that comes to church is saved. And I just want to make sure today, I just want to make sure that you're here today and you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So I want to ask you as they play this morning, I want to ask you, you've never been saved, you want to be saved. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is promised to no man, no woman, no boy, no girl. Life is like a vapor. It's here today. And man, it's gone tomorrow. So I want to ask you right now on the count of three, if that's you, you've never been saved and you want to be saved. I want you to slip up your hand on the count of three if that's you. You've never been saved, and you want to be saved today. If that's you, lift up your hand. One, two, three. Anybody in the building? Anybody in the building? Anybody in the building? You've never been saved, and you want to be saved. 
Anybody in the building? Just want to make sure everybody's saved and on their way to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to make sure. Search your heart and make sure that Jesus is your Lord and heaven is your home. All right, everybody looking at me today, listen, if you're not for sure that you're saved and on your way to heaven, I challenge you, come find myself, come find Pastor, come find one of the lay ministers, somebody. Say, I need to pray before I leave here today because I need Jesus to be my Lord. Can I tell you, it's the greatest decision you ever made in your life is saying yes to Jesus and no to the devil. I just want to challenge you this morning. Man, I'm telling you, I don't know if you can play that or not. What can wash away my sin? Can you sing that, Pastor? You can't sing it? Praise the Lord. Can you sing it? Come on. One of y'all know how to sing it. Come on, it's not that hard. I'll, I'll tell you the words. You just sing it. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I just want to tell you guys today, Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. If nobody in this universe has told you they love you, can I just tell you on behalf of Jesus, I love you, but most importantly, He loves you. He died on the cross just for your sins. If you're the only one living here on the earth, He loves you this morning. Praise God. Sing it. Hallelujah. Wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh. Precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No wonder found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands right now? I just want to pray a prayer over you if I can. Father, I speak blessings over your people today. I thank you, Lord, that the word of God came forth. And you said the word of God will go forth and it will accomplish that that you've sent it to do. That it will not return void unto you. And Lord, I speak blessings over your people today to encourage them, to increase them spiritually. And let them have a greater desire to hold fast to the Word of God than ever before. Lord, let them hold fast to your unchanging hand. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that whatever they may be facing, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the devil is defeated off of their life right now. I speak victory over their life. I speak resurrection life over their life and over their children, over their marriage, over their jobs, over their finances, over their homes, over their cars in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that they will walk in the newness of life, that they will walk in the joy of the Lord, and it will truly be their strength today. Lord, that they will walk in divine health all the days of their life. I rebuke sickness and disease, and I command it to be broken right now off of their life. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood, Lord, and I thank you the blood is against Satan right now. And every attack of the enemy that would try to come upon their family or their lives or their finances, and Father, I speak blessing over them during this season and even going into Christmas. Let them end this year and it will be the greatest end of the year that they've ever had in Jesus' name. And 2023 is gonna be marvelous. It's gonna be glorious. It's gonna be wonderful. Why? Because we're serving you and you're on our side that we'll live victoriously every day of our life. We love you. And we honor you, Lord, and we thank you for being our very best friend. 
In Jesus' name. How many can say amen? God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to come. Amen. Mr. Jody Cagle. Man. I'm going to stop inviting people to preach. Y'all keep setting bars. And I'm like, ah, I'm, in, I'm not preaching next week. Quinn, get ready. But as he preached that sermon, he reminded me when I was traveling. I used to travel and draw blueprints. And I used to have to get on planes all the time. And I'll never forget this one time when I was flying back from Arizona. And they sent me through Denver. And, and one thing that my boss told me, Phil Kudak, he said, as long as the captain's okay, you're okay. And I'll never forget, the captain got on the radio, and, they, you know, they tell you all these rules, that the mask fall down, save yourself first, all this other stuff. But I will never forget, one day we were flying through the Rockies, and all of a sudden the captain came on, he said, it's about to get a little bit windy, and we're going to feel some turbulence. And I, I'll never forget, I was sitting on that plane. You can keep playing, and you can go ahead. And, and I'll never forget, I was sitting on that plane, and all of a sudden, it started to get real rocky. And I was like, waiting for the captain's voice to come back on and say, we're through it. And he came back and he said, we're about to have to get lower. And I don't know if you know this, but if you go lower in the Rocky Mountains, it gets a lot more bumpier. And I was sitting there, and I don't drink, but at that moment, I could have taken that whole liquor cart and poured it down my throat. That's how nervous I was. I was like, this is why I hate flying. But I remember I, I sat there and I waited for the captain's voice. And I don't know how long it was, but it felt like forever. And I remember sitting there and it was rocking back and forth, back and forth. And I had this guy next to me. He, he drank a lot. And he was, he was drunk as a skunk. And he said, man, this is fun. And I looked at him like, please stop talking to me. And see, maybe your life is like that. Maybe you've been coasting through life, and maybe you wake up every single day of your life, and life is good. Maybe you've taken this flight of life a million times, and you're like, I got it. But can I tell you something? For some of us, and maybe it's you, maybe it's you this morning, maybe you're at a place in your life where the captain of your life, Jesus Christ, has said, it's about to get a little rocky. And you're sitting, and maybe you're waiting to hear his voice again. What his message said was perfect. You got to hold fast to the hope that he's going to come back on the radio of your life and say, we're good to go. And I remember I sat there and we're rocking back and forth and I'm like, we all about to die. And all of a sudden, the captain's voice came back on. He said, we made it through it. Listen to me, listen. Right now, you may feel like the captain is so quiet in your life that you don't know what's going to happen next, and you don't feel like you're going to make it to the next day or the next minute or the next hour. Can I tell you something? That if you hold fast to the word, you will hear the captain's voice come through. You go, you made it through it. It was hard, but you made it through it. You thought you were going to die, but you made it through it. You may have lost some friends, but you made it through it. You may have lost some stuff, but you made it through it. And this morning, maybe you need to hear the captain's voice remind you that it's not over, and you're going to make it through it. Maybe you need to be reminded this morning to hold fast. As the worship band sings this morning, I want you to know that we want to pray with you. We want to pray over you. Because it was the words of my boss that said, if the captain's not scared, you don't have to be scared. And this morning, I don't know where you are, but let me tell you something. Listen, the captain's not scared. This moment in your life did not catch him by surprise. The thing that you're going through did not catch him by surprise. And I promise you that one day he's going to speak into your life and say, we made it through it. We made it through it. We made it through it. But the reality is this, that for some of you, you got to hear somebody else tell you, you're going to be okay. It's going to. It's not the end. It may, it may feel like you're going to die, but you're not going to die. You're going to make it through it. And we want to pray for you. We want to pray over you. Because God's going to bring you through it. It's rough. It's hard. It hurts. It's bumpy. But God's going to bring you through it. And he's going to use this moment for his glory. For his glory. Let's stand and let's worship this morning. Mountain where I run. 
says you're never going to let you're never going to let me down may the king of my heart be the wind beneath my sails when I feel like I can't keep going he's going to keep me moving he's going to keep me going why because I hold fast to my hope that can only be found in Christ and as long as he has breath in his lungs I've got breath in mine and I don't know about you but my king will not die no matter how hard my life gets no matter how hard my life gets. So I'm going to hold steadfast to that hope. I'm going to hold steadfast to that hope. We're going to do something, and I didn't talk to these guys. Ricky, can you put your bass down and come join me down here? I want to, and Quentin. 
Some is teach. Come here, Miss Lady. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. You mind if I share with the family what's going on? Cut that down some for me. So, Miss Altice, you guys may may or may not know her. But Miss Tease, as you can tell, she's pregnant and you're about to have another boy. My God. And you've got what? Four girls. You're gonna have two boys. And a couple weeks ago, Tease called us. You don't care about me sharing this story, right? Tease called and she actually called Lamont and said, we're going to the ER with my daughter. And they were not here that Sunday. But they took it to it took the daughter to the ER because she had some blurred vision. And Lamont, who's the world's worst storyteller on the face of the earth, said they're at the ER. And I was like, for what? He ain't no. But this week, uh, if you know Zaya, her 17-year-old, this past Tuesday, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And all this week, this family has been getting hit after hit after hit after hit. Your sermon is perfect on time. But today I feel like as she goes through her battle, we're going through the battle with her, right? One body, many parts. So if one person's hurt, guess what? We all hurt this morning, amen? So we all pray her through some things. So I'm going to have the pastors come up and lay hands on it. Come on up here, Jody. And then I'm going to ask anybody else that likes to surround and lay hands on Miss Altice and pray with us over her family. You are more than welcome to. And we're just going to stretch for it. And we're going to let her know that she is loved by her father. And she is loved by us. And God has not forgotten her this morning. That God has not forgotten her family. And seasons have expiration dates this morning. Father God, right now we come to you. And we say, do what you can only do best. You work, Father. You work, Father. We strip from our hands as a family, and we are praying over our sister God to remind her that she is not by herself. She is not by herself. Remind her that every season has an expiration date, and on the side of every other battle, there's a victory. So, God, right now, we pray victory over this family. We pray victory over this situation, God, and we're holding tight to your promises, knowing that only you can heal her father. So, God, when she feels alone, remind her of this moment. Let her know that she is not by herself, God. Her family loves her, but most of all, you love her, Father. So right now, God, do what you do best and move, Father. Do what you do best and move, Father. Do what you do best and move, God. God, we stretch forth our sisters. We're saying, God, we trust your will, but here's our heart. We're praying for healing. God, we're praying for a miracle. God, we know what the tests say. God, we know what the doctors say. But God, we know what your word says. And that's what we're holding to this morning. Is your word. Nothing else, Father. So right now, God, we don't just surround her with family and hands, God. We speak your promises that are found in your word into her life this morning. That you are holding her up in your right hand of righteousness. That you will never leave her nor forsake her, God. We're, we're, we're speaking into her life that you have plans to prosper her and that this is only a moment. And if your word says it, it will come true. So we're holding fast to that promise that it's going to come true. We're speaking life into those dead places because we know that they're going to come true, God. And God, we know that you're going to use this moment in her life for your glory. You're going to use this, this story to change other people's lives. And when she looks back, she's going to say, all this happened, but God. But God. But God. 
remind her her tears are not in vain. Her, her brokenness is not in vain. Her tiredness is not in vain. And you will use it all for your glory in your due time. So God, give her strength that can only be found in and through you, God. In your precious and holy name, and if we agree with that this morning, all God's children say, amen. Y'all love on our sister, Tease. Man. We had the opportunity to go hang out with Tease on Tuesday. She texted me, and I'm, I'm a dad, and I was like, what in the world? I read that text message like six times. And he, he, here's the thing. I can go with her with thus saith the Lord, but the reality is that sometimes people just need to hear I'm here. Sometimes, see, what I've learned about God is sometimes God doesn't need for us to preach a sermon because he's going to have the best sermon ever. Sometimes we need to be like Christ was when he was preaching on the mount and we need to learn how to feed people physically. We need to be able to say, if you need me, I'm here. And I did that. I said, if you need us, we're here for you. What do you need? And I said, you want us to come by? We went by and, and, and I was expecting some, some experience where everybody was wailing and crying. But can I tell you something? We walked into a house full of joy. Isaiah was eating her ramen. And then she ate her fries and her cheese. She's a little fat kid. I've learned that. And I was able to walk into this house. Let me do this. Let me do this. I was able to walk into that house. And I was able to say, I was prepared to go in there past your vents. Like, it's going to be okay. God has got you. Give me the Crisco oil, slap it on the head. I was ready for that moment. But I walked into the house, and can I tell you something? That there was a peace that passes all understanding. And here is why. Because Tease knows that no matter what comes, God is there with her. And no matter how high the, the winds and the waves of life get, God is there with her. And God is her foundation. So this morning, be like Tease. Stand on the word of God and say, I don't care how high the water gets. I'm going to trust Jesus. I'm going to trust Jesus. This morning, Jody asked the question. He said, is there anybody here that needs Jesus Christ in their life this morning? Here, here's the thing. I want to make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure that you know. Because here's the reality. So many of us, we walk around and we think that just because we know the Word of God and just because we know the songs and just because we go to church that we've got a relationship with Jesus Christ. But the Bible tells me this, that if I don't confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Christ came, lived a perfect life, and died a death that I was supposed to pay, and then it says, if I don't believe that he rose again three days later and now he's standing up in victory, then I don't have salvation. See, here's the thing. I posted this the other day. I said, recognition, repentance, and redemption. First, you got to recognize that you need Jesus. Then you got to say, I'm sorry, Daddy. And he does the redemption. So this morning, I'm asking again. I know Jody did about every eye closed and every head bowed. I'm asking you this question. Maybe you're here this morning, and maybe you think, you know what? I know Jesus because I'm in church this morning. I know Jesus because... I walked into the building this morning. Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe that's you. Can I tell you something? That the word of God tells me this. That if I don't confess with my mouth that I'm a sinner and that I can't do it on my own, then I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So here's my question to you this morning is bigger than a prayer. Because Paul reminds us that when we give our lives to Christ, we're crucified with him. We no longer live, but Christ lives in and through us. So here we go. Listen to me. If you're here this morning and there is a doubt in your mind that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, don't go another second without knowing that you know that you know.
this morning, if there's anybody in this building that says, I just got to make sure. I want you to do me a favor. Lift your hand up as high as you possibly can. Nobody looking around. Nobody looking around. Nobody looking around. You say, man, I, I'm a sinner and I need Jesus. If that's you, God says, I got you. So if there's nobody, we're going to move forward. But I'm going to ask one more time, ready? If there's anybody that has even the smallest doubt in their mind, I want you to get right with Jesus today. So if that's you, just prop your hand up as high as you can. Man, that's amazing. People always think that pastors want people to lift their hands, and I promise you, listen, we don't. It's amazing when you can say, man, everybody in this building knows Jesus, and that's amazing. Man, man, look up at me. Let's pray real quick. I got a few quick announcements. Father God, I just thank you for Jody and just the word that you allowed to pour out of him this morning. God bless my brother as he continues to serve you, as he continues to walk in faith and not by sight going to different churches, whether it be in downtown Rock Mart or Ohio, Father. I pray that you just speak through him and that lives are continuously changed, Father. Pray for every person that is under the sound of my voice, Father, that they do not leave this building or go through this day without a relationship with you. In your precious and holy name, amen, amen, and amen. A few quick announcements to students. Tonight we are having students. If you come tonight, um, we, we got all the food stuff covered. It's Friendsgiving. So if you come tonight, just come. And also, if we have any adults that want to eat with us tonight, you're more than welcome to come eat with us. I'm just going to tell you, get to the meat before Zarian gets to the meat. Because Zarian's going to eat the meat, all the meat up, the turkey. Probably just take the whole turkey and put it on this plate. So, but we got plenty of food. Be here tonight. I think we, doors open at 445. We're still probably going to eat it right around 5, 5.15. It's going to be a different night tonight. So you're more than welcome to come. It's our friends giving. So come hang out with us. This Wednesday, we are starting our Bible study back up. Thank you guys for giving us last Wednesday off just to hang out with our family, so on and so forth. Who got this Wednesday? You want me to get this? Quinn's got this Wednesday. So you shall show up. I figured that was you. You wanted it. So make sure you join Quentin this, this Wednesday, 6.45 p.m. Quint will be on there bringing the word of God. Um, also, we are doing the Christmas parade this year. So if you have any decorating skills of a float, we got some ideas. We'll run it by you guys. Help us execute this. If you've gone to church here for any period of time, you know that I'm a visionary. I'm a visionary, and I say, hey, guys, we should do this, and then I just walk away. So, <laughs> so I said, we're going we're gonna to be at the Christmas parade. So we've got two floats that we're taking to Christmas parade. We've got a youth float, and then we have the trailer that's going to that's gonna be in the Christmas parade. So we need people that's going to be in the actual parade, but we also need people that's going to be at the front door. We're going to open up our doors to the community, let them come. We're going to have hot chocolate and all that other good stuff. So we need some people that's going to be here at the front door. If you can't smile, don't volunteer to be at the front door. All right, we need happy people at the front door. So there's, there's that. Um, we also decorate in the church. When are we decorating the church? Sometime this week, we're going to have this church decorated. We got huge Christmas trees, so we need muscles like Emmanuel's. And then, of course, Lamont, Black Santa, you got to be here. You know, sprinkle that Christmas cheer all over everywhere. But we're going to be decorating the church this week at some point in time. So ne before next Sunday, before you walk in this building, it's going to look all Christmassy before the people come in and visit the church. Um, and then we're going to be doing pictures with Santa, I believe. I got to get some dates together. We got a church Christmas party. December 17th is Christmas with Santa. Um, so if you can help out with that, that would be amazing. We also have our church Christmas party, December the 18th. We got a lot going on this in December. And then January, we're going to slow back down a little bit. Let you guys recoup and plan for our big Easter extravaganza. So we are moving right along. Amen. We, we rested way too long from COVID. It's time for us to move. So we got a lot going on. Last but not least, we got a whole lot of stuff going on. But in order to do all this stuff, you know what it takes. It takes money. So we call this our extended part of worship. And we don't just call that to make this thing a little bit less. But we call it our extended part of worship because can I tell you something? You can't sit in God's house and eat from his table if you can't give him what he's blessed you with. That's the, that's the thing. I'm not going to tell you how much to give. I tell you to give out of conviction, not out of convenience. So here's the reality. We can do everything that w in this community, or we can say we're going to do all this stuff in the community, but if we don't give, then we can't do it. Because, listen, here's the reality. 
I can go down to Home Depot, but if I don't have my debit card and I walk out with that wood, y'all going to be bailing me out of jail. I can scream I'm doing it for Jesus all I want. They don't care. So this is what I want you to do. Give out of conviction, not out of convenience this morning. Give. If God says give a dollar, you give that dollar, and I promise you God is going to use it to change the world. If he says give a thousand, come up off that thousand and give it because God's going to use it to change the world. I believe it. I receive it. Amen. All right, let's pray. Let's get you guys out of here. Father God, as we give today and as we go our separate ways, God, I pray that you just use what Jody spoke into our lives so that we can go out and change the world by telling them that our hope is found in you, God. I pray that you bless every quarter, dime, nickel, penny that is given this morning for your glory and your glory alone. Bless everybody this week as they go throughout their week until we come again next week in your precious and holy name and all God's children said, amen. I love you guys. I will see you next Sunday. Bye.